I saw this photo captured by Daniel Barahulak in 2010 during the devastating flooding in Pakistan. Those long dark streaks are the shadows of a helicopter that has just dropped food aid to flood victims. And the crates have smashed open as they hit the water and the food is sinking. And these people submerged up to their knees, waists, necks are rushing to salvage what they can. Their movement transformed by the overwhelming power of the water. I felt this image with my whole body, empathizing immediately not only because of the horrific situation depicted, but also because of the uncomfortable beauty of the image itself. It immediately brought to mind Raphael's final painting, The Transfiguration. I just have to say, I love that Jesus dressed like a Pakistani. Um, <clears throat> I had traveled in this part of the world myself in 2000, trekking through the mountainous landscapes of my Pashtun ancestors on the border of Afghanistan and Pakistan, taking some photos myself, ironically of people who then were suffering through a devastating drought. And I remembered these people, but a great distance had since separated me from that place. And I was probably affected more than I know by 9-11 and the prejudices of its aftermath. But through this image, a great distance within me was suddenly bridged. As a director and artist, this mix of visceral experience and discomforting beauty is what I strive to create through my work. For the past three years, together with a team of artists, scientists, and engineers, I've been developing Hollow Scenes, a large performance installation that is a visceral, visual, and public collision of the human body and water. Sited in public plazas or parks or the courtyards of arts or science institutions, Holocene's features three large aquarium-like sculptures, each inhabited by a single performer carrying out an everyday behavior like shopping or cooking. Filled and drained by a custom hydraulic system, each aquarium floods with up to 12 tons of water in less than a minute, transforming the movements of the performers within. Now, it turns out simulating a flood safely is tricky, so it's taken us years of R&D to design our aquariums, the first of which will be begin uh, being fabricated next month. And we just prototyped our hydraulic system using an industrial water container to uh, house performers uh, carrying out some everyday behaviors that we've gathered from collaborators around the world, such as buying flowers in a mall in Saudi Arabia, or nursing a thermos while waiting for the sun to set in Colorado, or making ramen in a dorm kitchen in Japan. As the water rises, the performer swims to the top for air when necessary, and then dives back below to adapt his behavior to the new aquatic environment. As the water drains, he continues, soaked by these mini floods, and aware that the water will soon rise again. Aquariums are a lifelong fascination. I love these fabricated, transplanted ecologies, separated from the viewer only by a sheet of clear glass that, for me, has always paralleled the thin surface between real and dream space. I've often imagined an aquarium's inhabitants peering at me through their windows to see me on the outside as the entertainment, the imprisoned, the submerged. I'm using the aquariums of Holocene's to weave the unraveling story of water. The rising seas, melting glaciers, intensifying floods and droughts into the patterns of the everyday. The ebb and flow of water and the resulting transfiguration of human behavior offers an elemental portrait of our collective myopia, persistence, and for better or worse, adaptation. Thank you.